evening to all our participants. This is Dr. Shikha Sharma, and I will be the host for today's webinar. And I'm going to give a very warm welcome to our guest speaker, Dr. Shikha Bhagi Bhandari, who is a facial aesthetics and permanent makeup specialist. Good evening, doctor. And it's a real pleasure to be right here on your channel and to be addressing a lot of, I think, a lot of budding dentists and uh, the freshers. Is that what our audience is comprised of today? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So before we start with the webinar, I just want to inform all the attendees that if you have any queries in the middle of the webinar, you can put it in the Q&A section not in the chat box, and all your queries will be answered by the end of the webinar by our guest speaker. So uh, before proceeding further, I just want to give a brief introduction about our speaker. Uh, Dr. Shikha Bhagi Bhandari has completed her graduation from Amritsar, and uh, after that she uh, pursued her post-graduation from Pune, and after completing her post-graduation, she spent over a decade in the field of endodontics. And after that, uh, she served uh, as a teaching faculty. And after that, she established her own multi-specialty healthcare center, which was earlier named as Dream Smiles, which would grow to become uh, Timeless Aesthetics. Uh, it is first enterprise to offer credible certification and training programs, uh, which is, uh, I'm really proud to say that. <laughs> Congratulations for that. Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, she uh, aims to work uh, by, for transforming people's life by uh, transforming their faces. Uh, she aims to work to those who are affected by multitude of ailments, including vitiligo, uh, cancer, and alopecia, which is also known as hair loss. And... Uh, she provides the best to her clients. Uh, that's why she acquired such a lot of proper skills. So again, a very, very welcome to the Dentist Channel Online. We are very happy to have you on board with us. The pleasure is all mine, Dr. Shikha. Uh, I will start with... All right. Okay, so all of you viewing us today, welcome. And like I always say, welcome to Mars. It's a beautiful world out there with a whole lot of opportunities, with a whole lot of scope. Um, stepping out of your dental dentistry zone, uh, I understand uh, comes with a lot of, uh, you know, they, it comes with tons of questions and a lot of scare about, you know, uh, what, what can I do? What will I be able to do? Will I be able to do all of this? But trust me, uh, it comes with a whole lot of experience when I say, for me, it's been easiest to train dentists till date as compared to anybody else. Uh, for the major reason that as dentists, right from day one, we're used to working with machines in the hands. We were used to injecting, you know, so it comes all of these techniques that, uh, you know, I'm going to be talking about and showcasing today. Um, it's, you know, it's all already there in our hands. All we need yeah. to do is just hone up our skills, you know, and just get better at all of this. We all are artistic by nature because dentistry <laughs> needs a lot of art. It needs a lot of creativity. Yeah. So those knacks are already there in uh, us guys as dentists. So uh, this field definitely is like the next thing for all of you to kind of, um, you know, accept, adopt and incorporate in your practices. Uh, for the new kids out there, the new pass outs, I call you kids because uh, you're way, way, way younger to me. Uh, I happen also to be a professor, but now I've given up uh, the academics part because there's no time anymore. There's just as much as I can juggle. So uh, with, the, with the new lot of dentists out there, uh, I also understand and which you will agree that today setting up a new dental practice is very, very difficult. Uh, getting out of dental school, there are no job opportunities for any of the dentists out there. It's very difficult 
to even you know kind of settle down with a good handsome salary or a good uh, you know financial thing coming in so um, it is actually very sad when i when we look at the scenario in our country but then that's the fact and that's something we need to accept so high time we all kind of incorporate uh, some you know other techniques some other procedures which we are allowed to def- definitely do legally and uh, you know of course help patients and of course get so much more satisfaction uh, in our work um, as compared to just pursuing the industry right now it's a great add on so starting with my lecture today i want to give you a quick overview to what aesthetics is all about uh, and what all areas uh, or what all techniques can you kind of learn and adapt and um, like i said they are so so simple quickly taking through uh, taking you all through a quick journey of timeless aesthetics it started um, we actually started timeless aesthetics formally in 2020 in the jan of 2020 and it started as more of a disagreement between me and my partner uh, because he comes from a real estate background and he was you know very much averse to the concept of doing anything uh, to your natural body and he would just not agree to anything that i was doing and we were you know going through a lot of uh, uh different mindsets like i would put it so when he saw my work uh maybe with acid attack survivors now here i would just like to put in uh timeless aesthetics uh, has a not uh, it's running timeless promise foundation which is our non-profit social initiative uh, where we have pledged to free uh, pmu treatments to all acid attack survivors so that is uh, the most satisfying part of my work that i find where i'm actually working with these girls to transform uh, and i can't do too much for them but i can definitely give them their eyebrows and i can um, working with a lot of lip reconstructions and just that much and if i can get one smile back it's worth it for me so when he actually saw my work with uh, these girls and then he saw me working with a lot other people like the alopecia and cancer survivors who've lost their brows and uh, things like that that's when you know he kind of understood what you know how i was benefiting people and uh, finally uh, timeless aesthetics came into uh, play and then you know we had a registered company and that's how we started to work and right now i'm proud to say that we are the first dedicated company in the country where we are uh, we have our own retail line of products when it comes to permanent makeup we're doing our treatments we're doing trainings and everything is bar international standards so um coming to permanent makeup i want to begin with that and this is something relatively very new so now permanent makeup has been there in um around the world for over 3 decades but our country has just started to find out about it very lately so there are lots of myths attached to it lots of questions uh, uh you know a lot of phobia where people don't really understand what this is all about and that's what i would like to you know kick start your journey with so permanent makeup is basically the placement of the pigment inside of the skin and when i say inside of the skin i'm talking about the upper layers of the skin which is the epidermis up to the dermal epidermal junction uh, or i would say the papillary dermis which is the upper layer of the dermis so these pigments are placed inside with a tiny little needle and we kind of camouflage uh, and mimic that area like makeup now permanent uh, the term permanent is a misnomer it's a very loosely used term interchangeable some call it semi permanent some call it permanent now this is in relativity so when i say permanent it is in relativity to your regular cosmetics that you wear so when you're putting up an eyebrow pencil that uh, the result lasts only for a few hours while the permanent brows that i create stay for over a couple of years similarly to the lip colors um, you know whatever we are doing it's going to stay for a few years but it is semi permanent as compared or in relativity to a tattoo because a tattoo lasts you a lifetime while uh, the semi permanent makeup stays only for a few years and the main difference being the placement in what layer is shown in the upper layer of the skin which is the epidermis while for tattoo uh, we work right up till the mid to the lower level layers of the dermis now for how long does it last the permanent makeup mostly lasts for about a couple of years when i talk about eyebrows we 
have quite a few techniques uh, which are very popular, uh, which I'm sure quite a few must have heard about. So one is microblading. Microblading means we are using a hand tool with the blade attached on top and we are kind of creating cuts on the skin. And those cuts, uh, you know, we leave the color behind in those cuts and that eventually mimics hair strokes. So we are actually creating single, single hair stroke and that technique is called as microblading. And that's done with the hand tool. By the moment I pick up a machine that's called as micropigmentation, and that's the needle which goes in and out and leaves the color behind in the skin with tiny little punctures. So that's called as micropigmentation. Now microblading lasts for about a year or so, while micro, uh, microblading lasts about a year or so, while micropigmentation stays for about a couple of years. The most common question that is asked is, is it painful? No, uh, you all understand as dentists that pain, uh, you know, everybody comes with their own pain thresholds. Pain is a very relative uh, and a very subjective term. Some people will just jump at the side of a needle while a lot of them, you know, have, have great, great pain thresholds. So in that scenario, when we talk about permanent makeup, no, it's not really painful because one, I am working in the upper layer of the skin, which is the epidermis, where there are no nerve supply, where there is no nerve supply. So pain is not really a thing. Also, we use pre-numbing creams and we use numbing gels during the procedure. So I always say pain is not really a criteria in my chair. Uh, how long does the procedure last? Uh, it takes anywhere between two and a half to three years and for, uh, three hours. And for the beginners, it could you know, stretch till up to four hours as well. So for permanent makeup, this needs a lot of uh, patience uh, for the service provider as well as for the patient. Now, the main difference between microblading and micropigmentation, if you see the upper picture, you will see some hair strokes while the lower picture will just show you, uh, you know, a shaded effect. So microblading, like I mentioned, stays for about a year or so, while micropigmentation lasts you at least a couple of years. When I talk about microblading, eyebrows is the only area which is touched with microblading, while any other area of the body, whether it is the lips or the brows or the scalp, eyeliner, when I'm talking about vitiligo, I also do areola reconstructions for mastectomy cases, any of these, uh, you know, and or not to forget the stretch marks and the scar camouflage. Now, all of this is done with the machine, which is called as the micropigmentation. So here you can understand, uh, you know, what a hand tool looks like. So microblading is done with the hand tool, while micropigmentation is done with something like a machine. So microblading, like I just mentioned, comes with a little blade that cuts through the skin and leaving the color behind, while micropigmentation is more like a puncture thing something that resembles a tattoo, a similar concept, but like I said, these are two very different things. Now, the main difference here between microblading and micropigmentation is microblading is a big no-no for oily skins. So anybody with oily skin or a combination oily skin, we do not do microblading because the effect just does not last. While micropigmentation is your answer for any kind of a skin type, uh, you can just pick up your machine and very, very safely work. So when we say, why is it only semi-permanent? So when I've said that we work only in the first layer of the skin, which is the epidermis up till the papillary dermis or the dermal epidermal junction, we're talking about that layer of the skin which regenerates. So epidermis, as you And is the only layer of the skin until they become dead and they shed off. That's the dead layer of the skin. You know, when we say, oh, you know, we have dead skin, that's the epidermis we're talking about. So as the epidermis sheds, some amount of pigment comes out and, you know, that is why it slowly fades over a period of time. So that is why it is called a semi-permanent. While when we talk about a tattoo, the tattoo is placed right up to the dermis and this dermis does not regenerate. Whatever gets inside of the dermis stays there forever. So tattoos last you a lifetime. Another difference with PMU between PMU and tattoo is uh, the pigments. So you have, we use special pigments which are meant only for PMU. While for tattoo, we have different tattoo inks. 
Uh, also, PMU, the machines are very different, and PMU is done in multiple sittings, that is two to three sittings, while tattoo just needs one single sitting. So if you could see, this is how a tattoo looks like, and that is how permanent makeup looks like. Permanent makeup, the results are very, very natural. So this is this image is just to show you that there are different techniques, tried from microblading and micropigmentation or the shading, which we also call as the powder or the ombre brows. And then we have combinations where we are going in and mixing two techniques of microblading and micro shading. So it is up to us, you know, what kind of a result we want to create, what is uh, the end effect that we are looking at. Now, the first step in PMU is consultation like any other thing. Uh, consult is the most, most important step because one, you, you need to understand what your patient is looking for, whether their uh, expectations are even realistic or not. Uh, that's a very, very important aspect. Um, then, of course, is to understand their skin type. What are they aiming for? Uh, then you have to, of course, explain them uh, the before and the after care. And, uh, you know, of course, anybody who's going through this procedure for the first time is going to have a ton of questions right from, uh, you know, asking about the pain, about the safety, about the side effects, all of that, all that needs to be answered during the consult session. And then what is extremely important is to make the uh, client or the patient understand the downtime or the healing time uh, for PMU, because PMU comes with its own um, healing time of about a week. So you need to mentally prepare your uh, client uh, for, you know, to expect dark brows or dark lips for the next one week, and then eventually uh, it will all settle down. All right. So consult being the most important step. Uh, also, there are certain uh, specific before care instructions that need to be given like uh, no alcohol a night before the procedure, no coffee or tea on the day of the procedure, before the procedure, because all of this makes the skin very sensitive. And, uh, you know, um, workouts need to be done before they come to you, because after the procedure, 48 hours, we do not allow the workout. So all of this comes during the consult. And of course, the medical history, uh, in case, you know, we have any such situations, we need to check that out check out the skin that it is normal, no fresh rashes, cuts, injury, bruises, any of that thing. So once the consult is done, then we do the before pictures and understand pictures are very, very important. Your photo and video documentation is extremely important, whether you're pursuing PMU or you're doing facial aesthetics or you're doing uh, dentistry. So um, nowadays, the only source of marketing is social media. And uh, that is where all of this, uh, you know, your pictures and your videos talk for themselves. You don't, all you have to do is like post good work and you will have people walking right in. And this is where our main marketing strategy when it comes to aesthetics is more than anything, your work speaks for itself. You don't really need to go and market it further. Then we do the mapping and the prenum. Now I ideally prenum first. So we apply a prenumbing cream for about 30 to 40 minutes before the procedure. Once the prenumbing is done, then we go ahead and we design the brows or the lips. So uh, mapping is, or brow designing or the lip mapping is a very, very important part of permanent makeup. We never ever do pre-hand work. That's a big no-no because you have to be very sure. See, this is gonna be something like, a, you know, a, the effect that is gonna last for a while. So you can't go wrong with the shapes. So, and the entire creativity in PMU is designing that shape. So once that particular shape is sorted out, then the work is more like technical work. So uh, I spend quite a lot of time with the mapping part uh, so that you know I'm very, very sure that my client is happy, comfortable with what they're looking at because what they see is what they get. So my client has to be again very sure once they give me an approval, it's after that do I start to work. So once the numbing and the mapping is done, then it's about the procedure and then the post-op pictures, the post-care instructions and the follow-up appointment. Now, between two sittings of uh, permanent makeup, say when I'm working with the eyebrows, there's a minimum uh, time gap of 30 days before I can touch them for the second sitting. While when I talk about the lips, there's a minimum of 45 days that I keep between two lip sittings.
sorry, just just one more. Sorry, I'm at the clinic, so I have like a lot of work going on at the backside as well. Anyways, so um, while talking to you about the follow-up appointment, once that is fixed, the client knows that they need to come back after 30 or 45 days. And we say we go natural. When we talk about the mapping, it's very, very important. When we're talking about creating the shapes, we stick as close as possible to the natural because you have to understand natural is something that is acceptable. If you go, if you make too much of a change, it's very difficult for anybody to accept it. If I were to change your hair color suddenly from a black to a red, it's going to take you a whole lot of time to accept that or you might not even take it. So you always have to go slow when you're working with such major transformation to the faces. Choosing the techniques, uh, we depend on quite a few factors when we decide what technique are we going to use, whether it is microblading or it is uh, the shading or it's a combination. The first and the most important being the skin type. So if it's an oily skin, we do not do microblading. That's when you pick up your machines right away. Then uh, depending on the age. Now here, understand um, age. Uh, I do not really touch people under 18 unless there is a specific situation like alopecia or a cancer. Uh, survivor and very rarely uh, do I come across you know young models now these days young girls are getting into the pageants or they're getting into this beauty industry and everything so or the fashion industry and they need certain uh, you know changes done to them so uh, any once you touch anybody under the age of 18 it's very important to take a parent or a guardian consent and the upper age for PMU there is no upper age my uh, oldest patient would, I think, now be 88 plus. So it, it's a it's a great age group to work with when it comes to PMU because typically how they all tell me is when they see me, uh, Shika, you know, I my eyes have given up, so I can't really see where my eyebrows are. When I take off my specs, I can't see where to put up the pencil. When I put my specs back, that again, that space is lost because the specs takes it up. So anything done for this age group, they love you for it. Also this age group, the elderly ones that I'm talking about, the grandmoms, the mom-in-laws, this age group, they're not very finicky. Um, their aesthetic demands are not too high. So, you know, they're, they're not gonna be worried about the last millimeter is how I would put that. So that's a wonderful age group to work with. Plus they have the money and they have a great word of mouth. So, you know, if they're happy, they get 10 friends in. So for anybody who's getting into aesthetics, this is the main and the most wonderful age group to work with, the older clients. Of course, you have to look at the lifestyle. If you have somebody who's a model or somebody who's like a product wearer, by product, I mean a regular eyebrow pencil wearer, we have to go in for a shading. Uh, the microblading is not going to work in such cases. So we have a lot of factors you know, that help us uh, decide what technique we are going to be choosing. And then, like I said, we have a set care of, uh, you know, the, the before care instructions. We have set standards for that, which we kind of give to the client at the time of the consult and right at the time of booking the appointment. Uh, coming to the risks or the complications, if you look at PMU, there are not too many risks or complications attached. There are no side effects at all when done by the correct service provider. So here, this is a very important thing. As I talked to you, it's important to get a good training, the correct training, because skill, your skill, your hand skill is what matters here. Uh, if you're doing a good job, there are no side effects. But if you do not know what you're doing, then you might just end up messing up a face. So be very, very careful uh, at the time of my time. So pain is not really a criteria in my chair. We use the numbing creams and the numbing gels. So everything is kind of sorted out. Uh, coming to the infections, uh, we, no, we do not give them infections because we work in sterilized uh, controlled environment. They can get infection if they do not take proper good care once they go back home. Uneven pigmentation could happen because of two reasons. Now here, understand, uh, PMU uh, heals with a scab formation. And we tell our, our patients not to pick on those scabs, not to pull on those scabs and let the scabs fall by themselves. Now, in case they have pulled out a scab, what happens is that the area under the skin underneath the scab may not have healed and the scab pulls out some amount of pigment with it. 
So that is why there could be uneven healing. Or if your work was, or your technique was incorrect, uh, you worked more in a certain area and less in a certain area, of course, it's gonna give you an uneven pigmentation. But all of this can be very easily sorted out in the next sitting, which is your second or the touch-up sitting. Now coming to the asymmetry, uh, every face is asymmetrical. So we all understand that there is gonna be some kind of asymmetry. So there is just as much as I can balance uh, when it comes to the eyebrows. So uh, some asymmetry could be created by you when you're doing the mapping. So a little bit can be fixed in the second sitting, but not too much um, asymmetry. Excessive swelling or bruising, well, the swelling doesn't really happen when it comes to the brows. There is a minimal swelling and that swelling kind of settles down in the next couple of hours. But when I talk about uh, lips, we expect a decent amount of swelling. Uh, some people could have very minimal while some could swell up a lot, um, especially people with fillers. In case somebody has fillers in their lips, they have a tendency to swell up more. And rest is, you know, everybody is different. It depends on your own immune system. Some swell more and some swell less. And coming to the anesthetics, now you all understand, if somebody has allergy to any specific anesthetic, all you need to do is just change the agent. And that's about it. So what all procedures does permanent makeup cover? It covers eyebrows, it covers lips. Uh, we are also, when I talk about lips, we do something called as lip neutralizing or the lip lightening for smokers or the dark lips. So when I talk about dark lips, there are multiple reasons why lips could be dark. Uh, in our country, we, we uh, have a genetic predisposition to dark pigmented lips. Uh, a lot of people uh, are not smokers, they generally have dark lips. So, but it comes with a lot of, uh, you know, mental harassment and, uh, and the, a lot of uh, lack of confidence is what I've seen in young people uh, with dark lips because they typically come and say, oh, I'm not a smoker, but everybody around me thinks I'm a smoker just because of my dark lips. So let me tell you, permanent makeup is the only thing that can handle dark lips. It's the only thing which has long-term predictable results when, I'm, when we are working with dark lips. Nothing else work, uh, works. No peels work, no lasers work, no other treatment, no other procedures has long-term and predictable results when it comes to dark lips, whatever may be the reason for the darkness. So uh, lips is a very big area that we're dealing with when we're, coming, when we're talking about PMU. And like I said in the beginning, um, dentists is the best group for me to teach because uh, when I talk about the lips, this is our area. So it's very, very easy for uh, you know, my dentist uh, uh, trainees to kind of handle the lips, so it's a beautiful thing. So now other areas are the, uh, the permanent eyeliner, then we do something called as a beauty spot, we do scalp micropigmentation. And when I talk about medical micropigmentation, we are working with vitiligo patches. We kind of go ahead and camouflage vitiligo. We are working uh, for uh, the stretch marks and scar camouflage. So there are a whole lot of other, and like I mentioned, areola reconstruction for mastectomy cases. So now all of this is termed under medical micropigmentation. So who benefits from permanent makeup? Your client group, your patient group is huge. Now here, this is what is gonna answer your question that today, if I were to venture out into PMU, where will I get my patients from? Well, if you have an existing practice, your existing patients are your patients for permanent makeup. And if you're somebody who's getting, who's new and wants to venture out into this thing, it's a huge, huge, huge client group. When I talk about women, like I mentioned, the age is not um, above 18. Majorly, the girls that I work with are 20, in their early 20s. And uh, the older women, like I already said, it's the, my most favorite age group to work with. Then uh, anybody who has allergy to regular makeup is your client, uh, cancer survivors. So now when we talk about cancer, Anybody who has been cancer-free for over one year is eligible for permanent makeup. They just need a physician consent before you can work on that. Alopecia, it's a huge group. It's a very big problem that people have to deal with, a huge psychological issue for anybody who's going to alopecia. Well, they say, I can always wear a wig, but what do I do about my eyebrows? Um, for women, it's still 
not easy is how I would put it, but relatively compared to men, it's still okay. They can camouflage with a pencil, but for male alopecia patients, trust me, it's a huge, huge problem. And I'm dealing with a lot of them on a regular basis. So what we're doing is we're recreating their eyebrows to give them a much more natural look. And of course, we're working women. Uh, PMU, it's a great thing. Uh, my eyebrows are fixed. It, it doesn't. It takes me barely five to seven minutes in the morning to get ready. Otherwise, I know women who spend over half an hour every single day to fix their eyebrows and still may not be able to get the correct shape, um, the correct look in them. And men, men are a huge, huge, huge client group again. When I started practicing PMU way back in 2017, early 17, the only male clients I used to get were for scalp, for the scanty patches and everything, and then uh, for dark lips. Dark lips also, they, were, they used to be very skeptical because they did not know what to expect in terms of the results. And they always used to be worried that, you know, oh, I'm, what, what if I get a, a lipstick kind of result? It's slowly over a period of time, you know, and after seeing my work, that people are now comfortable and I have a lot of male clients now coming in for their lip colors. But also recently, over the last year and a half, I've seen a huge shift in trend when it comes to the male eyebrows. I'm working with a lot of men to fix their brows. Um, if you, if anybody is you, uh, of you is on my Instagram, I just posted a story in the morning because I will be showcasing an entire case of um, a shaded eyebrow. And then you can actually go through my profile and see a lot of cases of male alopecia and of course, men with generally scanty eyebrows, not just alopecia, people of course lose hair because of a lot of reasons. And I work uh, with quite a few people from, you know, the movie industry, the, the fashion industry, where because of aging, they've lost their eyebrows. And we kind of go ahead and, uh, you know, just recreate all of that. So now you're understanding, I hope that, you know, your client base is huge. Like I say, every single person is your client for permanent makeup in some way or the other because everybody needs permanent makeup. There are a few situations where you need to be very careful when it comes to PMU. Uh, pregnancy, it's a big blanket ban. It's a big no-no. You cannot touch a preg pregnant client. Uh, breastfeeding comes with its own issues. There is no scientific evidence till now whether you know the pigment gets into the bloodstream because we're working in the epidermis and epidermis does not really have blood vessels. But it does come with its own practical issues for me because if I have to have a new, uh, you know, lactating mom in my chair for about three hours, plus an hour going, an hour coming, five hours, and my practices cannot handle infants. So it could be a practical issue. So all of this is discussed way before I book my appointments at the time of the consult. When it comes to keloids, microblading is a big no-no, but micropigmentation is way safer with anybody uh, who has keloid tendency. Uh, diabetes is not really a problem. Control diabetes is no issue. The only thing I do is inform my patient that the healing could be a little delayed as compared to somebody without diabetes. And of course, uh, they have to be a little more careful about catching infections. And I generally like to put them on a basic antibiotic you know, cover when I'm working on them. Uncontrolled diabetes, I'd rather, you know, let them control and come back to me. And of course, come back to me with a physician consent. Any other major disorder, they need to come back with a physician consent. I do not touch them without that. Uh, anybody, any patients who are on Accutane or any other skin uh, medications, I send them back to their treating dermat and I ask for a dermat consent before I touch them. Now, uh, we come across Botox has become very regular these days. So if we, if I have a patient where I have to do Botox as well as I have to fix their brows, uh, so always PMU first. So do the permanent makeup first and uh, the Botox later. Uh, but in case the Botox has been done, then you must wait at least at least two to three weeks from the last shot just to be very sure that there is no asymmetry that the Botox created before you touch them with your permanent makeup. Uh, these days, we come across a lot of, uh, you know, cases where people have old tattoos on their brows and old permanent makeup. In case they have tattoos, uh, there is no way a tattoo can be camouflaged by my permanent makeup technique. So they have to go in for a tattoo removal before I touch them. 
but the old form and makeup can be camouflaged with color corrections and with a lot of other techniques that we teach. So that can be handled. In case there is any fresh cut injury or bruise or any irritation, we need to wait out, let it all settle before they come to you for the procedure. Now, this picture shows you what microblading looks like. This is a stroke by hair, stroke by stroke effect that we create. And uh, powder brows are like way softer. We have a shaded effect. Our ombre, ombre and powder are something similar. The technique is called as powder, ombre. Uh, it's more like a gradient that we create. By the Gradient, I mean, uh, ombre, and then we have something like a combination where we are doing microblading as well as micro shading together. Uh, I already discussed the permanent lip colors, and I also told you that nails are a big, big group when it comes to doing um, the lip colors or the lip neutralizing. The results of permanent lip color are beautiful. It heals more like a tint uh, rather than a lipstick effect. In fact, uh, so many times when I come across my patients, you know, uh, I see them after a while. The first question I tend to ask, are you wearing something on your lips? And they always laugh and they're like, no, there is nothing. You know, go to you, all my lip products and my brow products have gone into the bin, such a waste. Uh, scalp micropigmentation, again, is a huge client, has, comes with a huge client group. You can do it on men as well as uh, women. And uh, what we do is we create tiny little follicles. We camouflage that area and mimic the dots. We create little dots and those dots create, uh, you know, mimic hair follicles. So that area does not look empty or bald or, uh, you know, thinned out anymore. It gives a more fuller effect. Then permanent eyeliner, again, is a wonderful procedure to do. There are a lot of effects we can create with eyeliner, a regular simple eyeliner to a winged eyeliner to a smoky or a shadow eyeliner with eyeshadow, all of this can be done. But eyeliner comes uh, a little later. It is more like an advanced technique. Uh, coming to lash lifts again, it's a very interesting procedure, very easy procedure to learn and to put it in your practice. Here, we are not talking about lash extensions. By lash extensions, we mean we are adding on uh, the synthetic lashes, lash by lash on your natural lashes. But with lash lift, what we're doing is going ahead and curling your natural lashes so that it gives your eyes a more fuller effect and the lashes look longer and they look more curled up. And, uh, uh, you know, you, and the effect just stays for about a couple of months and it is amazing. The results are really pretty. And once Anybody starts getting this done, I have to be coming back every three to four months for a repeat procedure. Uh, eyebrow lamination is again a very in trend uh, procedure where we are kind of making the brow hair stand a certain way. Some of you will understand because it's something similar to using a make hair stay there and giving them a certain look. But with the brow wax, if it lasts only for a few hours, while with brow lamination, it stays for a few weeks. And it's a very quick procedure, barely takes a, you know, 20 to 30 minutes and you're kind of done. Uh, another thing we do is eyebrow tint and eyelash tint. Brow tint, again, is uh, the tint is a great thing for graying eyebrow hair and graying eyelashes. This is actually the only thing that works with uh, graying hair. And again, um, a huge client group for this as well. So very, very simple procedures. Barely takes like 10 to 15 minutes and your clients are happy. Coming on to the facial aesthetics part, uh, with facial aesthetics, it is the non-surgical treatment of the face, which includes the Botox fillers, facelifts, and a lot of other anti-aging and rejuvenating procedure. So we're talking about the Botox, we're talking about fillers, we talk about thread lifts. When I say facelift, it is a combination of different procedures like, like the Botox and the fillers and everything to give you a holistic um, face look. Then uh, we do chemical peels, but the only, we only do basic chemical peels because mid to deep peels uh, are not really our forte. It's we're not really allowed to do that. So basic peels are just fine. Then we do vampire facials are also called as PRP or the platelet rich plasma. Uh, you've seen all that blood mask and all those procedures, great procedures with very, very predictable results. 
then we have something called as mesotherapy, which is actually microneedling, where we're using tiny little needles to puncture inside the skin and push the product beyond the skin barrier to reach where it is actually in need. Doing we are doing doing um, Dr. Shikha, you are not audible right now, and your video has just paused. Can you please switch it off and turn it on again? Okay. Sure, one second. Now, can you see it now? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay, you may proceed now. Now, can you see it? Yeah. All right. I will just restart this. Just giving you a quick little glimpse to all these facial aesthetics procedures. Now coming to the Botox, um, a lot of people who are new have uh, this question that they do not understand the difference between Botox and fillers and they don't really know what does what. So um, in very layman term, let me explain you. Botox is like a toxin. It is going to go, you know, we inject that and it kind of relaxes the muscles. So all it is doing is giving you the anti-wrinkle effect. So Botox is what is used to treat all these wrinkles, whether we are talking about the forehead wrinkles, we're talking about these frown lines, we're talking about the crow feet wrinkles, and Botox is wonderful for gummy spine. So um, for all those people, um, um, orthodontists, and uh, you know anybody who's generally uh, treating gummy smiles, Botox is your best non-surgical, safest option to handle gummy smiles. I personally have a major, major gummy smile and I've been taking Botox for, I don't know, last uh, six or seven years or rather more and uh, there are no side effects. And it gives you the perfect smile because it temporarily paralyzes the muscle so that, uh, you know, the lip is not going to go up when you smile. Now, the effect of Botox uh, lasts anywhere between three to four months. So the injections need to be repeated in case you choose. Now, this is something that the patients typically ask, oh, once I start Botox, I will have to take it again and again. No, it's not. It's a, it's a lifestyle choice. Now, all these procedures that we're talking about here, when we're talking about aesthetics, all these are lifestyle procedures. So it's up to you. You choose it. Like how it is with the hair color. The moment you want to stop, you're getting a hair color, you just stop. It's similar with the Botox. You want to stop it? You can stop it. There is no issue at all. Uh, one second, I think my screen is lost. Just a moment. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes, it's visible. All right, perfect. So Botox, the effect is going to last three to four months and over a period of time, it slowly fades out. The effect I'm talking about, it's not going to be that, oh, tomorrow morning you wake up and you have the wrinkles back. It doesn't work that way. It's slowly going to come back. So it's up to you. It's up to your patient whether they want to take the shots again. There are no side effects per se. Nothing to worry again when done correctly when the injections, so what is very important, now with Botox, understand that there is no reversal. Once injected, the effect is gonna last for three to four months. There is nothing that can reverse the effect of Botox. 
So in case if it is done incorrectly, you could actually create a lot of problem for the patients. You could actually give them like a eyelid ptosis. The lid will not open for three to four months. Or you could give them like a side phase droop. Uh, so I'm not trying to scare you. All I'm trying to tell you is that be very sure before you know you inject somebody with Botox, be very sure that you've learned the correct skill because there is no reversal to this. The, whatever you do to them, they are going to stick to that for three to four months, no matter what they do. So there are cosmetic indications for Botox, like I just said, um, the frown lines, the forehead wrinkles, crow's feet, uh, even you know the bunny lines on the nose, then the gummy smile, uh, all of this, even uh, hyperactive mentalis can be handled. Then we give it for migraines, great results for migraines and headaches, great, great results for muscle hypertrophy. We get a lot of people with masseter hypertrophy. In those cases, Botox works wonders. You just have to give them the shots and you will see a lot of relief in them. And when uh, some patients take uh, uh, you know, Botox regularly for their masseter hypertrophy, you will see that the time span increases, the effect of Botox, the time span increases. So instead of coming every three to four months, like they were doing initially, they need to then start repeating it every five to six months. Then uh, a great, again, indication for Botox is hyperhidrosis. Uh, you can give it for excessive sweating in uh, the axilla, for excessive sweating in the palms and for the feet. So um, cervical dystonia again. So there are lots of indications when it comes to Botox, not just one, but we stick majorly to the cosmetic indications. And uh, we as dentists, again, are going to stick only to the procedures in the head and the neck area. We do not, we cannot venture out beyond the head and neck. Head and neck is our forte and that's all that we stick to. Coming to the thread lifts, again, uh, threads, uh, these are, uh, we, you must have heard a lot about mono threads. These are the little threads which are used, uh, even what you see in the picture is like a mono thread. So these little threads are used for uh, you know, static wrinkles. It is used for fine lines. Mono threads are not going to give you any major lifting. The lifting comes in with POG threads. So these are bigger threads, which are the threads which are placed inside of the cannula, which is then you know, placed inside of the skin and it gives a raw lift to the face. Now, what does the thread actually do? So the thread, as it enters inside of the skin, it is doing some kind of an injury that is, uh, you know, going to, if uh, it leads to collagen uh, reproduction and that gives you a lifted effect. Fillers, we have a lot of fillers these days, uh, not just the basic hyaluronic acid. Yes, of course, that's the most popular filler. Apart from hyaluronic acid, we have uh, the polylactic acid fillers. We even have the hydroxyapatite fillers, which are the stronger fillers. Fillers are what is going to restore the lost volume. That is the term filler. It's just going to go in and fill. So fillers are used for multiple things. Lots of indications, again, for fillers. Here I'm talking about an entire facelift that can be done with fillers. When you see the sagging happening, when you see these lines here, the nasolabial lines, the uh, you know any, any sag you see, you see pre-jowl, you see the marinade lines, all of those are filled by the fillers. Uh, you can do, you even have single indications of fillers like, like the lip fillers. Then we even do something called as non-surgical rhinoplasty or non-surgical nose job with the filler. Then uh, fillers are used even for depressed scars. So fillers, uh, polylactic acid fillers work wonders for acne scar treatment. And apart from that, of course, the hand and neck rejuvenation and other, uh, not to forget the under eye fillers. A great, uh, a very regular and a common indication for fillers is the under eyes. So you see those sockets, you see the deep hollows under the eye. And a lot of times the darkness is because of those uh, deep hollows. So that is where your fillers come in. Now face sculpting or the face contouring is uh, where we are using non-surgical procedures. Like I just mentioned all of these in the correct possible and the minimal possible way to actually contour the face as per need. So we don't have to, now this is one myth that comes attached with fillers is, or with Botox is that it is going to give me a very unnatural or a plastic result. No, it doesn't. It just doesn't. When done correctly, fillers are the perfect thing for anti-aging. 
again, uh, you are going to be asked this question regularly, what is the right age? Well, we say the first sign of the wrinkle or the first sign of the sag, you should start to get your Botox and the fillers done because the more you delay, the more product you would need and the more work you would need to get to reach your desired result. So don't wait up too much. At the first signs that you have of sagging or of wrinkles, you should start taking it. Plus, um, something like a nose job or a lip filler, there is no per se any age, of course, uh, we don't touch under 18s. We mostly are working with early 20s and the older age group, no age limit to that. Coming to mesotherapy, a very popular procedure, which is also kind of called as needling. It is uh, the use of tiny little needles, which uh, punctures the skin and pushes the product beyond the skin barrier up to the dermal epidermal junction where it is needed. So what it does is, one, by the virtue of micro injuries, by those little needles, it, uh, you know, there is a new, as the skin heals, you get new skin, which is going to give you a better glow. Then, of course, it boosts collagen production and the product, per se, the use of the product is much better when it is well absorbed by the skin and it reaches where it needs to be. So with mesotherapy and mesotherapy and PRP are, or the vampire facial are similar things. Uh, the procedure is just the same. The only difference is the product use. With PRP, we use the plasma, uh, that is the patient's own blood and the plasma we make with that. It is something similar to how we make PRPs for our dental procedures. And with mesotherapy, we use an externally made cocktail or a lab manufactured cocktail for the need. Now, mesotherapy uh, is effective for a lot of things to give a uh, general, uh, you know, rejuvenation to the face, for the glow, for pigmentation, for fine lines and wrinkles, for hydration, for all of these things, um, dark circles, mesotherapy has great results and very, very predictable results. Hydrofacial, very popular procedure again, non-invasive. Uh, so what it does is it is removing the dead skin, it is removing the blackheads and the whiteheads, doing away with all the gunk on the face and on the skin gives you very clean and clear skin. And uh, it's great for a regular maintenance. So now you understand your skin needs regular maintenance. So hydrofacials are great for that. A monthly maintenance is all you need. And hydrofacial by its vortex fusion technology, it is also infusing serums in the skin. So you have three sets of serums which are used with hydrofacial. The first being the cleansing, the second being the salicylic acid, which is uh, meant for acne prone skins. And the third one, which contains vitamin C, it's wonderful for the glow effect. So hydrofacial is uh, something that you all can benefit from. It's one thing you all must try and must take up. Um, indications I already told you, the procedure takes barely 30 to 45 minutes and it has multiple steps, about five steps. It starts with the cleansing and uh, um, the scrubbing and then the steaming. Then we use the dome abrasion part of it, the hydro, hydro dome abrasion part of it, where we are infusing all these serums and cleaning out everything. Then we have an ultrasonic scrub, uh, followed by um, the ultrasound uh, tip, which, with which we are infusing the serum because it's a hot tip. So it pushes the serum inside of the skin. After that, we are using a cold compression because the hot tip has opened up the pores and the cold compression is going to close down the pores again and followed by the radio frequency part. Um, it has no downtime per se. And it has uh, uh, the only thing that you need to do after any of these aesthetic procedures is wear your sunscreen. The SPF is very, very important. PRP, I already explained you. Very easy, very, very simple procedure to do. And these days, also, I think there's a repeat of the slides. Anyways, also with the PRP, uh, or before PRP, with hydrofacials, what we are latest doing is adding on something called as derma planing. Now, derma planing, we are using a surgical 10 number blade to go ahead and remove all that peach fuzz or the baby hair. Uh, and apart from that, we are exfoliating the dead skin. So we are mixing derma planing followed by a hydrofacial and followed by my most favorite and the most popular and the newest thing, which was the jelly masks. So in case you're not aware of what jelly masks is, you can actually go onto my Instagram and see a lot of videos and pictures of the jelly masks 
they have great hydration, they have great results. So all of these, when combined together, are called as the medicated facial. So these are a lot of procedures which are there nowadays in terms of aesthetics, which you all can add and um, uh, just look at correct trainings. It's the first thing that, you know, and the most important aspect of it. Uh, doctor, your video has just paused again. I okay, think there has right, been some second. technical glitch. I will just restart that. Is it? Can you see it now? Yeah, but it's not uh, running. It's paused. It's paused again. Yeah. All right. Now, it's the same. Yeah. Can you see it now? No. Okay, not a problem. Anyways, uh, I will try that again one more time, just see in case. Can you see it now? It's a bit slow, actually. Maybe some internet technical issues. I can't. Don't yeah. know what to do about that. Though. Is it running now? Yeah, but uh, we are seeing a little glimpse of that. Okay. All right. So let me tell you, uh, apart from that, a very important question, which all of the, all the viewers would be having right now. There are two things that I want to address. One is the scope of adding on these aesthetic procedures and two is the legality of all of this. So when I talk about the scope, uh, when I say permanent makeup, understand worldwide, there is no eligibility criteria as to who can practice permanent makeup. So everybody is eligible to do that. So um, like I said, in India, people are just finding out. So the scope is huge to add it to your existing practice because trust me, as a permanent makeup specialist, uh, one of the starters in this I've seen in this particular industry in the last year and a half, two years has been immense. So people are now starting to find out courtesy COVID. People had been, you know, on their social media, on their Instagrams for the longest possible time. And they suddenly found out that there is some, you know, procedures like these available. And now I have so many just walking up and asking for these procedures. So now is actually the time to add all of this to your existing practices. Or if you're new, just learn the skill before it is too late. Because the next few years, this industry is going to go crazy. Similarly, when we talk about facial aesthetics, uh, for facial aesthetics in India, again, the scope is very huge. You are allowed to do facial aesthetics. You are allowed to do Botox and fillers as dentists. There is no problem. There is no law or regulation that says that you cannot practice it. As a dentist, you are dealing only with the head and the neck area. And that is only the, the kind of procedures that I showcased. And that is all you're allowed to do. In case, you know, uh, how we say, okay, gummy smile is your forte. Gummy smile is not the forte of a doormat to hand, if I would put it. All right. So all of these procedures, there is no problem. There is no legal issues. Trust me on that. It is more like a myth that I don't know why after he ends up creating so much oh you're going to fall into the illegal situation if you practice facial aesthetics in my practice we have been doing it since 2014 in fact i think since 2012 trust me there is no problem there is no legal issue i am not treating any skin disease with botox and fillers all right the moment you start to encroach that domain, the moment you want to prescribe medication for acne and the moment you want to prescribe medication for pigmentation, that is where you're wrong. That is where it is illegal. You are not allowed to do that. But all this cosmetology, all this aesthetic medicine, you are allowed to do it only if you're pertaining to the head and the neck area. There is no problem. So the scope in your existing practices or as a new person is huge. People want these treatments these days. You know how it is for me now. My practice is like 
percent aesthetics, thirty percent dentistry. People would rather spend on their face than on their teeth. Till the time you know it is the same everywhere. Till the time it doesn't hurt, they will not get into the chair. But one first sign of a wrinkle or one little spot or one little tan, and they will run and they will want all these procedures done. So it is way easier to get patients to get clients for all of these with with your dental practice. So. For the ones who have existing practices, it's great to add on these. For the ones who are new, who just finished their dentistry or looking at doing something, once you take up, once you're trained enough and you have learned this skill, it is very easy to work as a freelancer. You can get attached to different uh, you know, clinics. You can get associated with the existing other practices or somewhere and go ahead and practice this. The investments are not high. All you need is a basic derma chair, one single room if you want to start your practice. So your investment is not going to be high, and all your stuff is basically consumable. So if you compare the investment as you know with dentistry, with dentistry you need a whole amount of machinery, you need a lot of stuff, a lot of consumables before you can venture into it. And here the margins are very high. If I tell you. Uh, just to give you an example, for permanent makeup, uh, I charge thirty thousand for two two sittings. All right. So if I'm doing eyebrows, it's thirty thousand, which includes both the sittings. You know what my cost is on my pocket? It's under thousand rupees per sitting. So I'm prac including all the overheads. So I am talking about spending two thousand bucks for two sittings, and the rest is all my profit. What do I say? I charge for my time and my skill, and this is what people ask for these days. These are luxury procedures. This is what they want, right? While with dentistry, um, being an endodontist for over fifty years, rather more, which is I can charge for a root canal in a city like Amritsar. It's it actually saddens me, but then this is a fact. This is the practical part of it. Uh, when you talk about uh, the scope of facial aesthetics outside of India, understand wherever you want to go and settle down, you can practice facial aesthetics on the basis of your license. So suppose if you were to go to US or Canada, you understand as a dentist, your BDS is not recognized. You need to go ahead and do further studies and you know clear all their exams and everything. So the moment you have a license, you just have to check the state laws. Now, uh, in certain countries, there is no problem. They allow all the procedures, while in certain states in U.S. they do not allow uh, dentin a certain thing. So all you have to do is just figure out the state of uh, the, uh, uh, the laws of the state. Sorry to interrupt and you, you in between, can, but yes. I think you are not audible to everyone. Okay. I want you to uh, slow down a little bit. So that all right. I can catch up. Sure, sure. So I was talking about the scope. So I um, I told you about the investments in in India. If you have to practice uh, facial aesthetics or permanent makeup, your investments are not high at all, as compared to the dental practice. There are minimal investments, and the returns are very high. Your margins are very high. If you were to go out of India for permanent makeup, you are ready to do it anywhere in Europe, in Scandinavian countries. You just need to get registered. With the local authorities as a permanent makeup spare artist, and you can start practicing right away. And the minimum charges, minimum you can charge is like a three hundred euros for a set of eyebrows or for the lips. But you need the skill. Uh, when I talk about facial aesthetics, it depends on the country. It depends on the state where you want to practice. You need to get your license fixed. Your license is your degree. So, like I mentioned. BDS is or MDS is not recognized in US or say Canada. You need to go ahead, clear your exams, do your uh, degrees again. Once you have your license in place, all you need to do is figure out the law of the state that you are settled in, and that is when you can go ahead and start to practice facial aesthetics. So the scopes are huge and wide. Um, the legal aspect I already mentioned. Please don't have any such myths in your head that you can't practice it. You can, without fear, go ahead, get your skills, get yourself trained. The only important thing is choose the correct mentor. Choose a good trained mentor, somebody with enough experience, somebody with enough work, somebody with enough results, 
when you choose a training nowadays i also understand because i come across this on a daily basis it is very difficult for a newcomer for starters to choose how do i choose who you know what training to take so here just one little thing is what i would like to tell you ask your mentor one for their experience to ask them for their results ask them to show you pictures to show you videos of their own personal work what saddens me is i see people who just finished a training somewhere and the next month they're launching their own trainings it is very sad you need enough experience you need to do enough work before you can go ahead and teach someone there are ethics attached to this too so be very careful don't just jump to a cheaper training because that pinch of the cheap training is going to last you for a very very long time and it's going to come back and pinch you for ever so don't do that choose very carefully uh choose a good mentor and then there is no looking back these things are great great to add on um i think i had some videos but i'm not sure if is it playing can you watch it yeah but it's uh, the voice we can't hear the voice in all the right video. okay i think we are we are almost at the end of our lecture at uh, this time uh, quickly i just want to take you through what i called as so this is timeless promise like i mentioned the non profit social initiative by timeless aesthetics which is now dedicated in the loving memory of my mom who i recently lost so here we have pledged uh, free treatments to acid attack survivors we do free treatments for burn victims we offer huge discounts to alopecia and uh, cancer survivors and uh, we are tying up we have a lot of people associating with us this is more to spread the word uh in case anybody is needy for these please feel free to connect them to me and i'll be more than happy to extend my services to them um sorry i think there's just a little glitch here anyways now i just want to take up any questions that are you know if the audience is want to ask before we end this session i i see a couple of them here Yes, Sanakshi, you offer internships. Yes, yes, Shikha, go yes, ahead. Yes, doctor, I must say that was a very enlightening presentation. Beautifully Thank presented. You. Uh, Thank you, Shikha. Comes uh, with a lot of passion. This is this is my passion. I think I'm yeah, doing my. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Even so. I've heard a lot about aesthetics. Uh, it has become increasingly popular over the past few years. So I've learned a lot in this presentation. So thank yes. you for sparing your time with us and for coming on board with us. So uh, uh, before taking a Q and A, I would just want to present a small presentation. Yes. So I want to talk about the Dentist Channel Online. It is India's first digital dental media. Uh, it uh, supports dental community and all the hardworking dentists who are working uh, for the community to improve their oral hygiene worldwide. And everything related to dentistry, creating awareness, spreading dental education, and uh, the technology advancements we are having. over the years so uh, everything every information in all under one roof so this is our website and the next we have uh, the upcoming webinars and workshops that we conduct every day and all the courses events and the prime membership that we provide everything is available on the website which is www.dentistchannel.online so here there are 700 plus live dental webinars that we have conducted so far and we are very proud to announce that and there are 25 plus dental workshops 400 plus 
national and international speakers we have uh, done our webinars with and 300 plus oral care videos under Save the Tooth. Save the Tooth.n is a campaign which I want to talk about. It uh, supports the dental community and we put the informative uh, videos there to uh, promote uh, oral hygiene. And next we have, this is uh, India Book of Re Records for having maximum number of speakers participating in virtual conference in oral implantology. So next is the prime membership benefits. Uh, the prime membership benefits includes lots of things like personalized account in Dentist Channel Online with access to profile special discounts on dental courses, access to all the webinars organized by our website, and certification by recognized institutions with CPD and CED points. Download your certificates from profile anytime. It's a one-time payment and it's uh, eligible for the whole year. You can take the benefits for the whole year. All the workshops, webinars will be free and you can access them anytime, anywhere you want. Um, next is the part certificate of past participation that we provide uh, to the all the attendees after the webinars. And uh, this is the prime membership that we provide. And it is the annual fee. And you can use this promo code double uh, S hundred to get a short discount. Next is the upcoming webinars. Yes, demystifying implant impressions, which is going to be held on twenty fourth April, five pm, and the host will be Aditi Nanda, and the, the, our guest speaker is going to be Dr. Vishwas Naram. And the next will be on 25th April. Uh, the topic will be, is your clinic going to fail? I think that is a very important topic that needs to be discussed. And uh, I think you should all attend this webinar. This is really going to help us all. And the next is our website. And this is like, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, anywhere. So yes, I think now we are going to take our questions. Yes. The first question we have for you, doctor, is uh, by Sonakshi Prakash, uh, that do you offer internships or shadowing opportunities in your setup for freshers? Well, we do a lot of uh, training programs, actually. So our training programs, we have short-term trainings. That is like a six day, five days or a six days. So we have a five days training program for facial aesthetics, six days training program for PMU. And all of these are live model hands-on. So practically all days you're working on live patients with us. And apart from that, we have two months uh, long duration uh, fellowship program, where again, it's a long-term course and a lot more procedures added and everything is a live model hands-on. This is what we are offering at the moment. Okay, so next we have that being from the rental background, what advice would you give a fresh graduate about when to enter the industry after UG or PG? <laughs> That's, uh, trust me, a very personal thing. Um, you, have to, you have to keep in mind that entering into PG is going to come with its own kind of expenses. It's going to come with its own time spent doing the PG. So if you're ready for that kind of a thing, definitely go ahead. But uh, these days, um, we also understand that the returns uh, for all the money that we spend in our post-graduation are uh, very difficult. So in that situation, or you know, if you want to wait a while before you can get into your post-graduate program, right after your undergraduation, and this is like a set of skill, you know, you can just learn it anytime because this is not going to go away. This is just going to stay with you. So right after UG, if you have the time, if you don't have the mindset to go ahead and do your post-graduation, this is wonderful because your returns are immediate. With PG, sadly, again, after PG, either 
you start your own practice, wonderful. But again, like I mentioned, starting a new practice is not easy these days, even for postgraduates. There are no job opportunities, even in colleges for academics, for PGs anymore. It's um, very limited now. So that is, again, another important aspect you need to see before you enter PG. So this, again, becomes like a very personal thing. But right after UG, you're ready to kickstart all of these trainings. OK, so how do we apply for your training programs? Oh, you just have to connect with me. Drop me a DM on my Instagram, and I'll have uh, somebody from my team just connect with you for every, all the details. OK. So the last question we have is, is it possible to contact you and get more information about the same? Yes, yes, please. <laughs> so for all those asking, uh, my Instagram handle is Shikha Bhagi Bhandari. S-H-I-K-H-A-B-A-G-H-I-B-H-A-N-D-A-R-I. You could look up for Shikha Bhagi Bhandari. You could even look up for Timeless Aesthetics India. Just drop us a DM, uh, drop us a message in the inbox with your name, your number, and your city. And the concerned person is just going to connect with you ASAP and give you all the details for the same. Okay. I think that's all that we have. I also see, okay, here somebody who asked uh, duration of the fellowship size, so any setup or upcoming training in Mumbai. Yes, I have a training coming up in early June in Mumbai. Again, you can connect with me for the details for the same. And I think this is a question for you, uh, Dr. Shikha. Can we have a webinar discussing the procedures in detail when you need to tell? <laughs> you need to speak to your organizers for the same. Regarding. Okay, okay. We are soon going to have a webinar like this in detail, and uh, the dates and time slots will be uh, given to you. So I think that's all we have here. It was a uh, wonderful having you uh, on our platform. Dr. Shikha, Thank you. and Thank you so uh, I think we having. have a very uh, great time and I hope every uh, participant uh, has learned a lot from you. So thank you. So I much. think we are going to end our webinar here. All right. Thank you.